Welcome to the Running For Real podcast, where each week we bring you a conversation designed to help you create positive change in your life, community and planet. It's a collective of conversations about running, the climate emergency and social justice. Running For Real is for the brave, for those with courage and vulnerability. United by our love of running, we're driving momentum towards some of the really tough challenges we're facing as humanity. So come join me, Tina Muir, and let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode 269 of the Running For Your Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I'm excited that you are here. And today we have a very real, raw, vulnerable episode um, with my guest today, who is Regina Lopez. Now, I was really excited to get to know Regina. She's done some really impressive things within the running community in terms of her race results. Um, She was the uh, second place finisher at the USA 50K Road Champs. She's an Olympic trials qualifier. Um, and she is a Spartan trail champ. So we talk a bit about that. We talk about imposter syndrome. We talk about confidence. Um, Regina has had a lot of confidence issues over her life and has been working through them and continuously works through them. So we talk about the importance of community and surrounding yourself by people who believe in you and love you for who you are. I think this is a really empowering episode and I think many of you are going to really connect with Regina and what she is saying. Some of those thoughts that can be quite mean inside, um, I think you will be able to speak to those um, and recognize them and and f- hear a way of, of working through them and seeing that you can get to the other side. So this is quite an inspiring episode and I'm really excited that we have Regina here with us. Um, and be sure to go check out uh, Regina on social media and you can also follow along as it is Hispanic Heritage Month. It is important that we um, do what we can to uplift the stories of those uh, Latina and Latino women and men who are um, speaking out and sharing their stories. So you can go learn more about that by using that good old thing, you know, called Google or actually you should be using Ecosia. That's E C O. SIA because every 75 searches you do they will plant a tree it's a pretty cool app so go check that out Uh, I use that as my search engine all right so we are just going to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors we'll be right to this episode with Regina Lopez thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this episode of the Running For All podcast Today, we are brought to you by Athletic Greens, which is a health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition really simple. Now, with so many stresses in life, it's hard to maintain an effective nutritional habit and give our bodies the nutrients they need to survive. We have busy schedules, there can be poor sleep, exercise, the environment, work stress, simply not eating enough of the right foods, definitely guilty. Uh, It can leave us deficient in key nutritional areas. AG1 by Athletic Greens is the category leading superfood product. It's going to bring comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition to everyone. Keeping up with the research, knowing what to do and taking a bunch of pills and capsules is hard on the stomach and it's hard on our brains trying to keep focused Uh, to help each of us be at our best they simplify the path to better nutrition by giving you the one thing with all the best things one tasty scoop of athletic greens or ag1 contains 75 vitamins minerals and whole food source ingredients including a multivitamin multi-mineral probiotic green superfood blend and and in more and best of all I should say, in one convenient daily serving. The special blend of high quality bioavailable ingredients in a scoop of AG1 works together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, support energy and focus, aid with gut health, digestion, support a healthy immune system, which will effectively replace multiple products or pills with one healthy, delicious drink. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina to take control of your health, give AG1 a try, 
And with the vitamin D, many of the population are vitamin D deficient. Adding vitamin D to your daily routine, especially going into the winter months, is a great way to support vitamin D production as it gets colder and when there's less sun exposure. A lot of the health experts are noting the importance of vitamin D and more studies are surfacing around its direct impact on supporting immune system. So that is an additional reason to go get your hands on the Athletic Greens. You'll get that one year free supply. So go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina. Regina, thank you so much for joining me today on the Running For All podcast. I'm excited you are here. Thank you. I'm excited too. Yeah, this is going to be fun. And I want to start with, I found it interesting when I was doing some research about you and your story that, uh, so you're an Olympic trials qualifier. You ran in the Olympic trials just this past year, Spartan trail champion, and you finished second at the USA road, uh, 50 K road in your first ultra. Yes. Those are very, uh, there's a wide range of things there. I mean, granted the 50 K wasn't trail, it was road, but still, um, I would love to hear why is it that you, I mean, you've obviously done well at each of these things, but why keep the, the broad range of activities rather than as people tend to do picking one and honing in on it? Yeah, I think I been just wanting to try thing, try something new. I felt like the ages of 21 to like 29, I was just doing marathons. I was just doing the same thing and and just hanging out with the same people, doing the same thing. And I just got bored. And I follow Courtney. I follow all these ultra marathoners. And I was like, I want to do that too. And it just seemed more exciting. <laughs> so I just did it. I even have um, Spartan friends as well who do Spartan races and that intrigued me too. So I'm like, I'm just going to show, I'm just going to go for it and try it. I love that. And, and with the, the Spartan race in particular, did you have a feeling you were going to be good at it? Or did you, was that champ, like how soon into your trying out Spartan trail was, uh, was the win? I didn't think I was actually going to win that race. I've, I never really focused on trail running. I was more of a road runner and I just went out there. There was a lot of athletes in that race, like sponsored athletes. And I wasn't sponsored at the time. So I kind of psyched myself out, meaning that, yeah, I put in the hard work. But when you see other sponsored athletes, you don't think you're going to win. So I just went in that race. I had fun. I was competitive. I did. I raced my own race and I won. That's really cool. So then with that, coming from someone who looked up to a lot of elite athletes, someone who you said you were intimidated, you freaked yourself out. What, there's two things I want to ask from this. One being, what would you say to someone listening who is in that situation that you are in, intimidated, doesn't even have to be at the sub elite level, but just sees these elite athletes and is so overwhelmed with, well, they're so good. They're so fast. Um, what would you tell that person? Or what would you tell yourself back in that time? That it's okay to feel that way. It means because it means it's because you, you care. It's okay. It's okay to care, but it's all, but to know that you are equal to them, that if you put in that work and you get in that line, you belong to, you belong there. And I did belong there. Um, yes, I let all the athletes run out fast and I stood behind, I ran my race and within eight miles to go, I passed the girls and I felt good. I felt great. And, um, yeah, I just ran my own race and I think that's why I won. And I put in the hard work as well. And then too, I was around other Spartan athletes. I was around other women who did trail running. So just, learning from them and learning from people that are better than you. So that's what I was doing at that time. When you say learning from people that are better than you, do you mean, do you like talk to them and try and ask their advice? Or you mean just watching from afar? Watching from afar, watching videos of them, watching how the work ethic, watching how they eat before a race or how they tackle the hills their mindset before races, their mindset before training. Um, 
that's watching people. That's, that's what I do. I'm, I actually work with um, children with autism. So I work with behavioral. Um, so that's what I do for a living. So I love just looking at people and see how they, how they, how they do it. If it's race, career, um, if it's um, public speaking, I just see how they're doing it. And I'm like, okay, I could do the same thing. Mm, I love that. And I want to ask more about that in just a minute. And then the second thing I was going to ask you though, you being now a pro runner yourself for mm-hmm. Salomon, um, amazing company to be working with. Uh, when this came about with having looked up to these other athletes, did you welcome it immediately or was there some imposter syndrome of what, why me? And I, I'm not sure I'm ready for this. How did, what did you do um, when, when that came about? I was so happy and I was so excited. Solomon, um, Stephanie, er, um, and uh, oh my goodness, I'm like getting, um, and yeah, so Stephanie, they were so welcoming to me. And it, I'm sorry, I'm getting tongue twisted right now. So when they con, when I contacted them, when they contacted me, it felt like they weren't judging me. I felt like they wanted me to, and I wanted to be part of the team. And that's, I wouldn't have taken a sponsorship if I wasn't welcomed. Like I wanted to be part of something where I felt included, where I felt that it was something bigger than myself, where, you know, people who want to just grow, who are about inclusion, who are about just treating people right. And I I just wanted to be around that because if it wasn't, if, it was a sponsorship where I didn't feel welcomed or if I didn't feel like they were nice to me, I wouldn't have taken a sponsorship. Like they've been and good to me. What was it before you, did you, were you aware of them beforehand and what was it about them that stood out? They wanted to keep contact with me. They wanted to know who I was as a person. Like it wasn't about the times. It wasn't about none of that. It was more like, who are you as a person? that that was important to me for sure absolutely I mean that's pretty amazing to have and uh okay so then we'll we'll go back into your pro running career in a minute but first I want to ask you you mentioned that you work with children with autism so tell us a bit about what you do outside of your running with that so it was interesting I wouldn't have thought I would ever have a career that's funny to think about because I've always been so focused on being an athlete I've, that's why I been so focused on just running. But when COVID hit, I felt like, oh, wow, I'm just a runner. Like there's more to me than just a runner. Oh, so this was only like a year ago that you Mm -hmm. realized this. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know what I wanted to do as a career. And I think that, I think that's why with running, I was so good at it. Um, Of course, like I wasn't always you know, winning races or doing any of that, but I worked hard to achieve that. So it was just so hard to make that shift. Like, oh, well, like to have a career and learn something new, that was kind of scary for me. Mm -hmm. And so when I got into this career, I, I loved it. Like right now I I work with um, children with autism and it's just been very rewarding. And I wouldn't have thought that I would find something a career that I would enjoy. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, yeah. Like coming from like a background where I didn't think I was going to have a career and then finding a career that my purpose or something that I love to do. It's, it's amazing, you know? know. And you, you mentioned that you didn't think you could find a career that you loved and that you enjoyed it. What gave you that impression? Like, is it that you hadn't seen anyone do that or why, why think, I mean, I just, as someone who loves what they do, I find that hard Mm -hmm. to, I find it hard to think about people not enjoying what they do. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I did work with, um, I I would like work part-time, like working with children with autism, but I felt like I didn't have mentors. I didn't have people to, I didn't have the supports. So when I found the job where I work at now, it feels like a community. I feel like I have people to mentor me, to help me grow. And I didn't have that. So it it does matter what type of job you're at or even the company that you're at. If you're going to love your job or you're not going to love your job. Mm. 
and I found a place where I actually love it. That's why when I talk about Solomon, you know, when they, I felt welcomed, you know, that's why I stayed. That's why I love the company. And then I found out my career where people are nice and welcoming to me. And that's why I stay. But if I, if I had like a job or a, um, a sponsorship that I didn't feel that way, I, I, I would leave because to live a life where it's like, you're not being acknowledged, you're not being appreciated, you're not doing something that's rewarding, then why do it? So true. So then do you do you find ways that your running helps with, or I guess let's, let's start with this. Uh, the community side of things is obviously very important to you. You've mentioned that um, Solomon made you feel welcome. Do you mention that your job makes you feel welcome and appreciated. So, um, tell us about why that is so important to you, that sense of community and belonging. That's what I tell myself all the time. <laughs> That's really important to me. And I, I recently just got married too. And a community is, yeah, I, I don't know why it's important to me. It's, I think maybe cause I didn't have that growing up, like where I was, you know, um, getting positive reinforcement where, you know, getting praise or, and I feel like growing up till now, I feel like I'm around people who bring me up because when you're around people who bring you down so much, it really affects you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so what would your advice be then for someone who does live in that situation where they feel they're, you know, maybe not a teenager, but maybe someone listening who feels like they're around people who they know deep down aren't helping them up and they see other people saying, you know, do this with your own life. And they're thinking, yeah, but I don't have that support to help me get there. That it's scary to change. It's scary to make new friends, to go outside and meet new people that are different from, for example, your own culture, your own values. And it doesn't mean that you have to agree with them, but it's more just being open-minded. And I feel like that even helps you grow. And then when you're open-minded, you're, you're able to just be more open, open-minded open with yourself and others. Mm-hmm. And you just learn to love more that people like learn love more. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I would say about that. Yeah. No, I think that, I think that's great advice. I love that focus on community and just finding people surrounding yourself with people. Yeah. Even if it is scary, um, who are going to help believe in you and are going to help, um, encourage you to chase those bigger goals. Um, and, I would love to talk about you have, I I read through multiple things that you have been writing over the previous months. And, um, you said about running, you know, always being there for you. It's helped you overcoming just a lot, um, helped you maintain being positive despite having challenges and these tough times. Um, I would love to talk more into that um, as this is a tough time for many people within the running world and in the world in general. Uh, We are trying to work through a lot of different factors. So just talk to what it is about running that helps you through the tough moments because I think a lot of people will resonate with it, but also it may remind them of what running can be for them if things aren't going great for them either. I would say that running has helped me during the times where I felt alone and where people didn't understand me. Like, for example, like growing up, I had like a speech problem where I didn't start speaking until I was five. So a lot of times I'm very self-conscious in the way I speak. Yeah. Yeah. And with running, was that a part of your life from an early point where um, you used it as a way to, if you were having this this self-doubt within, you know, speaking or just being in the company of others, running was a way of just, you could just run and uh, 
there was no speaking or no other people's opinions required exactly. or needed. Was, yeah. Exactly. So tell us a bit about that. Like what, what did that feel like to you as a child who, yeah, maybe was quite self-conscious? Well, I was so self-conscious with that. I was self-conscious about, um, growing up, I was called chubby a lot. So that was tough, you know, growing up as a child and, you know, um, so when I got into running, it made me feel like I was strong, like people's opinions didn't matter to me. That's, I, that's how I gained confidence. And so I just put all my focus in running. So I do feel like when others do put me down, I use it in my running. And I'm learning to put in other areas in my life. You know, what it comes to finances, you know, I didn't think I could make money. I didn't, I started learning about growing other areas of my life and not just running. Thank you to Gooder for sponsoring this episode of the Running For Real podcast. Summer is coming to an end, but it doesn't mean that your sunglasses can't be there for every step of every moment of every day, especially now the sun is starting to come up later and go down earlier. That means more opportunities for the sun to be blinding us in the eyes. And that is where having a pair of Gooders near you at all times, which I do, is going to come in really handy. Uh, They have so many fun uh unique patterns and personality styles if you want to go check those out or you can just stick with the simple ones uh that are just black with black or uh maybe if you want to be a little bit adventurous you could do a black frame with a blue um lens uh whatever you like there are all kinds of different types for every personality type and i absolutely love them uh they're fun they're fashionable they're functional they're affordable Uh, No slip, no bounce. They're all polarized and they're fun. Every purchase of Gooder sunglasses is backed by a one year warranty. They have 30 day free returns and they are a 100% carbon neutral company, which is amazing. They also sunglasses that give back. They're proud percent of members, proud members of 1% for the planet as is running for real. And that means 1% of Gooder's annual gross sales go directly to environmental nonprofits working towards making our world a better place. I love being a part of 1% for the planet and you should consider it too if you can. You can get yourself 15% off your entire order by going to goodr.com forward slash Tina. That's 15% off at goodr.com forward slash Tina. If you want to support me and you can support the show, you can treat yourself to a pair or two or three uh, and head over to gooder.com forward slash Tina, get 15% off your order. Some of my favorites are a ginger soul, um, the uh, flamingos on a booze cruise I'm loving right now. And they have some new collections out there, including a marathon series, some cosmic uh, crystals series, and there's just so many other fun ones. Oh, and if you uh, are worried about blue light in the evenings, they actually have some blue blockers there. So that's another thing that I've been meaning to say. You can go check those out um, to get the blue light blocker glasses for the evening, if that is something that you find yourself unable to sleep if you are looking at blue light. So go to goodr.com forward slash Tina to get yourself 15% off. So I do feel like when others do put me down, I use it in my running and I'm learning to put in other areas in my life. You know, what it comes to finances, you know, I didn't think I could make money. I didn't, I started learning about growing other areas of my life and not just running. Mm -hmm. And with, uh, with this, just love that you have for running and the ability that you, you know, you did you find out pretty good that you were uh, pretty early that you were good at it and um, it allowed you to keep doing it? Or was it, I don't care how good I am. I, I want to do this because it makes me feel good. I start, I started playing sports at the age of five. So mm. being that athlete in me, it's, it's basically who I am. If it's playing basketball, it's playing volleyball and I just always been athletic. That's just who I am. Mm-hmm. So if right. it wasn't for running, I'll be in, I'll be doing another sport. I'll be in basketball. I'll be in volleyball. I just have to do something that's active. Mm-hmm. 
And you've always been that way, I take it. Yes. Yeah. And then you said about, um, you know, being called some not so nice things when you were, Mm -hmm. when you were younger. And I, I know many, many listeners and, um, can attest to this. And I too, most of my listeners know I have been called some words that uh, were offensive at the time as well in regards to that. And, um, how did you heal that relationship to yourself in terms of body image? I mean, um, has your relationship to running changed in terms of maybe when you were younger, it was seen in part as a means to an end and trying to change your body and now that's changed or tell us a bit about body image and yeah, how your relationship to running has come into play. I think it's great that now on social media, now you have like love yourself, you know, love any size you are because growing up there wasn't that for me. Mm-hmm. And at, when I came out of my mother's room, my nickname was chubby. So you can imagine family members and friends and, you know, everyone around you calling you chubby. And that was very difficult growing up because they thought it was cute. That was a nickname for me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I had to do a lot of deep conversations with myself and affirmations and, you know, trying to seek mentors who could help me shift my mindset because I did struggle with that for a long time and changing my mindset. Like, no, I'm none of those things. And I think also getting into lifting has helped me too. Mm -hmm. You know, like just changing it where it's like, wow, I could carry a 20 pounder and I feel so much stronger. And yeah, just changing my mind, my, my shift in mindset and the people around you. Do you mean when you say about the strength training, the lifting you do, is that in terms of just respecting what your body can do? Or Mm -hmm. you mean that you just like the way that it makes you feel? Both. Okay. That's good. So then what would you say to someone? I mean, we've all had um, labels put on us over our lives and particularly those in childhood. I think what you just said there about being called chubby is a good example of people constantly are fighting now. You know, there's a lot of people saying like, stop labeling everything, stop making every term uh, insensitive and offensive. Like we can't even say this anymore. Like, why can't I call a baby chubby? Um, You know, they are chubby, look at their legs, you know, and that's true like a baby, you know, that's how they're meant to be, right? Like they are supposed to be the shape they are, but then that shows you that the impact of those words can stick with someone for a lifetime. So, um, I think that's an important example of where we really should think carefully about our words, even if it means that we are having to to think before we speak, which is a lot of effort into, and I have to do this with my own daughter when, um, she does something, I have to resist being like, good girl, good girl. Because, you know, instead I can be like, oh, you caught that ball instead of like, good girl for catching it. Uh, and so I would love for you to talk to someone who maybe did have a label given to them of some kind, or they were called something when they were younger and they know that it's still with them today. They know that it still impacts them and they can't seem to let it go. It just, that always comes back to them that they feel like that, whatever that person said, or those people said when they were younger is true. What would you say to that person? It's okay to be heard and to feel the way you feel. You don't have to hide those emotions because I feel like when you try to hide those emotions, it's actually worse. It's not good for you. Mm-hmm. Or even talk to the people that hurt you. I'm like, I'm sure that that would make them feel. Because I even have shared, you know, with my family, like that has hurt me. And they have said they're sorry. And that's not what they meant. So I think that was nice for them to acknowledge high fouts. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just being open about it. And you, I've seen, have been able to take those words back about, you know, you mentioned about your legs and you now see mm-hmm. them as strong. You, and it's funny that you mentioned that because I always had a thing with my legs as well. And then also 
I remembered when I coached at a university, all the girls would often say like, oh, my legs this, my legs that. And I'd say, you know, you know, we're going up a hill right now. That's your powerful legs going up this Mm -hmm. hill. Like if you didn't have those leg muscles, you'd be struggling more up this hill. You'd have to stay on flat all the time. So I would love to have you talk to that. Maybe someone who does have a, is self-conscious in an area of their body, how they can spin the narrative so that it is a positive thing so that they can see that part of their body as, you know, perfect just as it is, because at the end of the day, it's our body. Um, and we can fight it and try and change it, or we can just say, you know, I love you for who you are. I feel that it comes down to just being careful where you tie yourself Mm. and being loving to yourself. And for me, what has helped me is being around people who love me for me and acknowledge me. And for example, you're not going to be hanging out with people who say your, your legs are big or you're, you're fat, you know, it's not going to make you feel not so good about yourself. So I really do think it's about the network you hang out with you're surrounded with. And that's had, that has helped me or at times when I'm down and don't feel good about myself, I'll open up a YouTube and listen to ask, um, as, um, to motivational speakers and my mindset just shifts. I'm like, okay, it's time to work now. Mm-hmm. I think that's important that you mentioned there that it doesn't have to be someone directly related to you or close mm-hmm. to you. Um, I think often we see people who are in these like, you know, big powerful positions or like have these massive followings or massive platforms. And they say, you, you know, find your da da da. And it's like, yeah, well, it's okay for you. Look who you're surrounded by. Like, of course you think that, but you, as you said, you can be surrounded by those people. You just have to use the internet instead. Like it doesn't have to be a physical meeting one-on-one with that person. Anything else you would add? I mean, I meant to what you were saying about, um, (laughs) what you were saying (laughs) about perspective. (laughs) No, and I know it could be hard to at first because there'll be times where it's like, I don't, I don't feel like I have a community. I don't have people who are just like me, but it takes time. You need to go out of your bubble, your shell and try to go connect with people. For example, I love lifting. I love running. Okay. Who can I connect with that? That feel not that I feel, but that has experienced the way I, my background, you know, I'm Hispanic. So I'm like, oh, okay, this girl on social media, wow, this girl has experienced what I have experienced. Well, that's a connection, you know, and then meet up with that person. Oh, of course, like, you know, get to know them and see if they're cool, <laughs> you know, many cool by like, they're not, um, just red flags. You just want to be cautious with social media or just go to, networks and you know live speakers and connect with people that way you connect with people through you know meeting someone at starbucks it doesn't always have to be on social media or meeting someone for example if you join crossfit if you join a gym you could connect through people that way as well yeah great suggestions thank you now going back to your childhood um you just mentioned being hispanic um and you grew up in uh, a mexican american uh with mexican american latinos surrounding you in los angeles uh now you said about the high school you went to didn't have a track and so you had to run in these busy roads in los angeles so i can only imagine um so I would love to talk about how did your early running help make you a better runner today? Because surely not having access to everything made you more driven, made you tough, made you committed. So tell us, like, how did how did that shape who you are? I know, I don't know how this is going to sound, but when I, I've been put down so much throughout my life, and I feel, I feel like that pushes me to want to achieve that goal. 
for example, if it's you're not going to go to college, you're not going to play, you're not going to run competitively. You know, that's what I've been told. So I worked really hard to get a scholarship to go to college. Um, and that's always been my kind of mindset. If someone tells me like, oh, you're not going to do something, I'm going to push myself. I don't know if it comes from like, you know, not having a track and being growing up disadvantaged, meaning like, you know, not having a track or um, not having money for college. It just made me strive for more. Like I can do it. Thank you to Picky Bars for sponsoring this episode of the Running Thrill podcast. I am loving being a member of the Picky Club, which I pay for myself. You can save up to 30%. You can get free shipping, exclusive perks, and things like the new granola, which was sent exclusively to members of the club. And I love it. You can get free little samples of things. And the more you spend, the more you save. So if you spend $25 or more, you get 10% additional. 45, you get 20% off additional. If you spend 65, you get 30% off additional. And on top of that, you get an additional 20% from your running for real coupon code. Now, with that, you can pick various bars that you might like. Um, you can pick the uh, granolas you like. You can pick the oatmeals you like. Um, and they come in, look, there's some options for little mini travel or pop-up cups, as they call them. So you can take those with you on little adventures. They also have chip, chip, hooray, performance pancakes. And the drizzle, if you haven't already tried, is delicious. Now, if you don't want to be a member of the Picky Club, you can get 20% off your order of $25 or more if you want to do a one-off definitely try some of the bars. Um, the mint condition is one of my favorites. I need, I love our fudge nuts is another of my favorite and the need for seed. So this real food performance focus is going to give you energy, uh, sustained energy, I should say. They're delicious. They are these foodie flavors. They're trail ready. They're um, really, really picky about their ingredients so you don't have to be. And they are fun. They're just a really fun company to work with and to try and enjoy. So you can go to pickybars.com forward slash Tina. That's P-I-C-K-Y-B-A-R-S.com forward slash Tina to go check it out. I am loving it and you will see why if you go try it out. I am sure of that. So go to pickybars.com forward slash Tina to go check it out. I don't know if it comes from like, you know, not having a track and being growing up disadvantaged, meaning like, you know, not having a track or um, not having money for college. It just made me strive for more. Like I can do it. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it, it definitely does. And, but then how do you balance out the, how do you forgive yourself for things and how do you treat yourself with kindness? If you do have that approach, just as someone who used to <laughs> have that very much like fighter, like yeah. I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do this. I'm so tough. Like I'm even like clenching my fist saying it. And that's like, wait, like I'm spending a lot of energy, like holding my fist tight here. So how do you keep yourself? Um, how do you give yourself the love and compassion then? Um, or how do you find that within your life? If you, if being driven is motivated a lot by what people have said bad about you? So for example, if someone told me you're not going to call college, like, because I'm, for example, your background or something like that. So yeah, I'll have that in my head. My head is like, okay, yeah, I'm going to push myself. And then I'll be around people who love me and who make me feel appreciated. And then that changes me, but I'm still going to push. So it's like a balance. Do you ever find you get it wrong and push too hard? Yes and no. <laughs> it's okay. We, I think, I think I, I have definitely, definitely, definitely done that many times. Um, but, uh, yes. That's a good question. <laughs> it is, it's hard to get the balance right. That's why I ask because, uh, I think I've gone too far the other direction right now, but yeah, I feel like there is a happy middle ground somewhere. So, um, yeah. Any more you'd, you would say to that? Finding, for example, the balance. Mm -hmm. How you do it? I do it by, for example, I have a husband who's very supportive of me. So, you know, when I have that love and I feel like love always wins. So mm -hmm. 
you know, I, when I have that mindset of like that fight, it brings me back to love when I'm around love. So that's why I always say like, you know, very be picky with your surroundings because of me, if I'm around people put me down a lot, that fight will come out. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, surrounding yourself, people, that's been mm-hmm. a common thread throughout this conversation with you is yes. finding people who mm-hmm. love you for who you are. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, switch gears and talk about uh, Hispanic heritage month, which is going on right now. Um, and you have said about growing up, you didn't see many Latina, Latino runners, um, and you admired athletes. And as you've already mentioned earlier in this interview, you said, you know, I'm going to be an athlete. Um, did you find other runners inspiring while you were growing up or did you just straight go, um, I'm going to carve my own path? Well, I was always in sports. So like volleyball, basketball. So I didn't, I looked up to like athletes, but I didn't really look up to, to someone until I got into running. I was inspired by this upper class class girl. She was like two grades higher than me. And she asked me to join the cross country team. So I joined. Mm -hmm. So it's because of her. I'm a runner today. Have you told her that? Yeah, I have. Okay. So that's why I got into running because of her. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then at the time, were you aware of the lack of representation? Like, you know, I've heard uh, white supremacy described as uh, by Guante as um, it's not the shark, it's the water. Like it's just, just everywhere. So when it came to representation, like, did you notice that no one looked like you or was that just something you were so used to seeing that you didn't even, it didn't even register until later on in life? It didn't register till later on in life. You know, I grew up in LA and in LA, there was a lot of Latinos there and Latinas there. So when it was when I went off to college is when I noticed it. And it was my senior year in high school. And I remember doing a camp at UCLA and the coach told me like, keep running. We need more representation. And that didn't click for me. I'm like, I, I, it just didn't click. So now what did you think back, when he was saying that? I didn't think anything of it. Okay. You just kind of were like, okay. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go now. Okay. Yeah. And then, sorry. I, continue. Think, I think that wasn't my mindset back then. It was more like, how am I going to get a scholarship? How am I going to get into college? Because to be honest, I, if I wasn't for running, I don't think I would have went to college. And I stood in college and, you know, I finished my degree, but I love the, the running aspect of it more. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I mean, I think most runners listening to this can uh, understand that part of things, (laughs) enjoying running way more than work or other parts of life. Um, Mm -hmm. And then tell the listeners what happened at 29, uh, you know, bringing it full circle. For what? Sorry. For you know, being the, being told about being, a, uh, that there wasn't enough representation. So you, something happened when you were at a half marathon. Wow. Yeah. I went to a half marathon and then a woman and her daughter came up to me after the race and the daughter and the mom, she said like, thank you so much. You know, you're a strong Latina woman. Like we need more women like you. And I thought that was so nice. And it's so interesting too, like how people would just come up to me and be like, wow, you're so strong. And that just, it just feels great because I didn't have that growing up. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it just feels good. And do you, since that day, try to, like, if you see um, young Latina, you know, little girls along the course, try and look at them and, you know, draw attention to the fact that you're out here doing this and they're out watching? Yeah, I, I think it's, it just feels great when... I know I'm making an influence. Like I'll go to some community runs and some girls or, you know, they, there's actually two girls. They actually went to my 50 mile treadmill race and they always just, every time I see them, they always tell me, Oh, like you, you inspire me. And it just feels great that I'm able to just encourage other female young runners. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely know how that that feels, and it's really cool. And then let's talk about the 50k road race finishing second. Um, did that heighten the experience, knowing what that meant in terms of representation? You know, it's interesting. Though I didn't see any Hispanics there. I didn't see. It was in New York. It was an ultra marathon, but it wasn't as big as a marathon, so it was different. It was smaller. And honestly, I didn't even train for it like how I usually do because I was actually preparing for a wedding. So I went to that race and um, I just competed out there. So I went in there and I got second. Yeah, Yeah, it's really cool. Um, And then the Olympic trials, uh, if I read this right, you qualified with your twin sister? Yes. Is that right? So tell us about, yeah, what was that like having your sister out there on the, doing the Olympic trials with you? That's amazing. Yeah, it it was great because we were encouraging each other to, to finish. She tried to make the, the Olympic trials, but during that time, her and I were inseparable. All we did was train together. And it was interesting because a lot of like outsiders would be like, you guys, you two are not going to make it or just, we're not nice to us. So when we made it, it was like, wow, like we did it, you know, even though despite like, you know, what people were saying, we were just so focused on each other and just making it. So that felt great. Yeah. And then, so you actually ran the race together? Yes. We both made it that year. Yeah. But the, the race you like ran alongside each other for the event itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's so cool. Um, so then with the representation thing, seeing people out there, like, do you often go to events together and do people say like, wow, that's so cool that you get to do this together and, and represent and show that, um, you know, it can be a part of life, uh, for Latina, Latino, uh, men and women or boys and girls. We used to do that a lot, but right now we're doing things separately, I think as twins, um, people want us together a lot, but mm-hmm. I think it's also important to, as twins, to know themselves as individuals. And I, I, yeah. I actually struggled with that. You know, who am I? You know, mm-hmm. am I just a twin? I, I didn't know who I was as my own identity. So what have you learned about your own identity as Regina, just as you've been working on that? That I'm strong that when I'm very focused and committed, I achieve things Mm -hmm. that I'm intentional. Like I am intentional with action. So I'm very like, I need to, I need like a venture. I need change. And that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep that going? Um, how do you keep chasing those things as, you know, um, life is going to change? How are you just for anyone listening who is having a tough time, uh, with their own identity, figuring out who they are? How, what would you say to that person to work through? Yeah. Discovering what they want to do and how to keep that in their lives. I would say seek out people who are different from you. Um, Mm. be sideline, like, meditate more um it's okay to be alone and to follow what you want in life for example if you don't want to do that job anymore then don't do that job find something else that you love if you want to learn how to dance learn how to dance learn from other people who know how to do that or who are more experienced and that's what i did that's why i did the spartan show race That's why I'm doing like ultra marathons. I'm learning from people who are like, I say better because they're more, they have, they've been doing it for a long time. But once I'm in there, I'm like, okay, like, how am I going to be better myself? That's so cool. And you've, you've said, I've seen you wrote somewhere that uh, once you get your mind right, your body can do incredible things. So talk to that a little bit. Uh, how you learned that and and what that means for anyone listening. I feel the mind could be pro and con for yourself. 
meaning that when your mind is right, like you could do incredible things, your body is right. Um, it's, it's just where you want to go. You have to know where you want to go in life. So if it's like, you know, eating healthier, taking the steps to get there. But if you're have a negative kind of mindset, it's, it's kind of hard to overcome that. So that's why I always bring up. It really does matter about the community and the people you're around. I, I, I'm also, I'm just a big advocate for that because that has helped me overcome a lot of things. And that's, I love that. What are some goals you have for the future of your running or life in general, if you want to share? <laughs> I, I'm getting ready for boards. I want to be a BCBA. So I'm getting ready for that. You have but, to explain that what that is. So behavior analyst. Okay. So yeah, I'm getting ready for that. I heard it's really hard. So I'm studying for that. So it's, you have to be board certified and basically you make programs for children with autism. So it's basically you make the behavior plan. So okay. I'm doing that, but also I want everyone to know that your job is not who you are. So there's other elements to myself. You know, if it's like, I love adventure, I love, I love seeking, I have a growth mindset. I love um, writing. I love, there's other elements to you. So it doesn't have to be just a job title. So that's me too. And what else? I'm also want to do two trail races in November. I want to be financially free. I, there's just so many things I want to do and I'm just working towards all of it right now. So right now it's just a time just to work. I love that. Well, keep it up. Uh, is there anything, where, do, where can people go find you for uh, following along in the future? And um, yeah, how can they get to know you more? And um, yeah, tell us a little bit about future staying in touch. Oh, you could just follow me on Instagram, get fit with Regina Lopez. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. They can go there and they can find everything they need. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you sharing your journey, sharing some of the, the tough things that you've learned over the years and, um, yeah, just your vulnerability, um, your growth mindset, uh, and just, yeah, have an appreciation for you. So, um, keep up the good work and look forward to seeing what comes in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for all these questions. Something new I never thought, thought about. So thank you. Before we end this episode, I just want to take a moment to shout out my podcast editor, Jeremy Nessel, who has done such a wonderful job of looking after my podcast, taking out all the mis mishaps in the episodes, while still keeping in the, the vulnerability and the realness and the rawness of the conversation. This is not one of those podcasts where I take out the ums and the errs and the the sometimes the delay in in words because i think it's very important to keep that authenticity we're surrounded by perfected and manicured everything and i think it's really important that running for real stays that way so thank you to jeremy for your work i also want to thank maria vargas and amber moore who are also part of my team they've been a big part of this community and me being able to build this brand so just want to give them a shout out too all right let's get right back to the end of this episode Thankful to Regina for taking her time with her answers, for thinking through so thoughtfully what she wanted to say and just being really raw and vulnerable with us. I appreciated her honesty there and I know that took a lot of courage to speak to that, especially as she said, um, she ha had, uh, I provided some challenging questions and it was um, things she'd never thought about before. And I'd love for you to explore that within your own life. Ask yourself some of those things. And uh, what would you say if that was going to be your answer? Or if that was going to be the question directed at you? And if you enjoy that kind of thinking, uh, the Together Runs that are offered every Monday, you are going to love these Together Runs. I ask you questions prompted and allow you time to think about them. It's a good mix between um, a body like a check-in with uh, yourself your surroundings your body and your mind uh, and the ability to have a conversation with someone who isn't there I know that sounds crazy but give it together run a, a try you 
if you are like most people, or all of the people who have tried it and told me, they love it. And I hope you will too. So you can go check out Together Runs at runningforreal.com. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors today, Athletic Greens. You can get a one-year free supply of Athletic Greens by going to athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina. You can get that 75 whole food sourced ingredients and vitamins and minerals in one scoop that you can have every day. I want to thank Gooder. Gooder sunglasses. I am always wearing them. They're fun. They're fashionable. They're affordable. And they're just always with me. I have a pair within reach any time of the day. My girls love them. They love to put them on their faces. You can get 15% off your order by going to goodr.com forward slash Tina to go get yourself a pair. And thank you to Picky Bars. You can also get 20% off your order at pickybars.com forward slash Tina. Get yourself a Picky Bars membership, which I have as well and love. Uh, Everything I've tried from Picky, I've absolutely loved. And I think you will too. Thank you so much for listening. There will be a Together Run coming out on Monday and I'll see you next Friday for another episode.